Well, to answer your question, sometimes even if you want to get somebody on board, most of the time, like 99% of the time, even if you want to get somebody on board at the early stage, the chances of you getting somebody good are so slim, so, so slim that you shouldn't even try. Like that's my advice because I've had thousands of entrepreneurs go through this process. And the reason why it doesn't work at the beginning, let's say you just have an idea and you say, Ooh, I need a technical person to come help me think through this. And I want them to work for free because that you're looking for a co-founder, you're yeah. looking for a CTO. And so now think about it from the other angle. I'm a CTO. I have lots of opportunities. I can go work anywhere I want. I can make a lot of money. And now I come and get a, an inquiry from a no, an unknown person with no past success, no traction. And they say they have a billion dollar idea. Guess how many of those inquiries I get on a daily basis? At least oh. 10, <laughs> right? At least 10 every day. So now if you think of it from that perspective, like what is my incentive to say yes to you rather than the thousands of other people who are in the same shoes? So what I teach entrepreneurs is to actually earn your technical co-founder or your CTO. So what does that involve? The underlying principle is focus on traction, figure out how to validate your idea, really understand how to acquire the customers. What is that number one problem that they're going to pay you money with, right? And if you can use the no-code solutions tools to be able to build a solution and prove traction, go and sell the product, right? Every little step that you take towards making that idea a reality and so that it's not just an idea, but that it actually has legs, the more success you're going to have in attracting anyone into your company, whether it's a technical person, whether it's an investor, whether it's another partner, anything else, right? So the one thing that you need to focus on at the early stages is just focus on traction. How can you get more traction? Because then you're now pitching from a position of opportunity rather than a position of need. I need you to come help me build my product because I can't, right? right. Like if you think of that as a sales pitch, would you say yes? If anybody right. said, I need you, like, right, nobody's going to say yes. <laughs> but if you say, hey, I have this amazing opportunity. I already did this and this and this and this. I have customers waiting out the door. Imagine, like, this is what I've been able to do without you. Imagine what we can do together. Like, that's exciting. Yeah. Right? And so this is what I would encourage you to do. And so the, the, but getting back to the question, should you use no-code tools? Absolutely. And, like, I have people in my program who join TechSpeak, they learn uh, how to validate and all of that stuff. And then I uh, they, they actually learn the no-code tools. Sometimes you don't need to. You can hire somebody else who can uh, do it faster if that's, if that's what you want. But if you have the extra time to learn how to use the, the no-code tool, then go and do it, right? It's, if, it depends on your technical ability, right? How non-technical you are and how stra strapped for time are you? Because even if you use no-code tools, it doesn't mean that you have to do them yourself. Like you have to use and build the tool uh, you, the, on that tool yourself. There are lots of experts, lots of developers who use those tools and they can help put together a solution for you. Uh, but you need to be able to do that early validation. You need to build a clickable prototype, which is very easy to do. You don't have to be super technical to do it. And then when you already know exactly what needs to go into your product, Putting, putting a solution together is so much easier, right? And so you're working directly and together with a developer, but we're not talking about CTO here, right? We're talking about okay. someone technical to help you if you need the help, but it's not a CTO. You don't need okay. a CTO at this stage because you're not really thinking, how am I going to scale this to millions of people? You're not thinking uh, that we're going to have 10 developers working together and we need someone to manage them. We need to hire a team, right? That comes later. And then, so while you're proving traction, you should still be connecting with other CTOs, building relationships with them, meeting new people. Like it's just like dating. You're good. Yeah. If you're not going to, if you want to get married, you're not going to just pick the first person that says yes to you, which that's a big mistake that I see it still happens, right? But you shouldn't say that. You see, you should, it's like getting asking someone to marry you on the first date. No, 